Welcome back. We'll start with the third lecture on the cultural institutions that we had, as we had promised. Uh, in the last two classes, we have talked about the various cultural academies, music uh, museums, libraries, uh, the various minority institutions, the language institutions, and the film divisions. Now, today we, our main focus would be the major institutions under culture. All these major institutions come under the Department of Culture and the Ministry of Culture. So, we will also look about what is Department of Culture, what is Department of Youth and Sports Affairs and so on. So, the first topic that we would cover today is the Archaeological Survey of India. Now, as the name itself suggests, Archaeological Survey talks about the ancient remnants that we have. So, there is a brief reference between the ancient monuments and the archaeological sites that we will see in a minute. So, this Archaeological Survey of India comes under Ministry of Culture. Uh, it was established in 1861 by Alexander Cunningham Kun, uh, and he divided India into 27 circles with 3650 ancient monuments. Uh, there are two acts that direct the work of the ASI. The one is the Ancient Monument and Archaeological Sites Act 1958, the other is Antiquities and Art Treasure Act 1972. This Antiquities Act prevent, prevent any kind of illegal export of Indian antiquities. The idea is to preserve and conserve the natural monuments, the cultural monuments uh, to help in the chemical conservation, restoration activities and work with the various expeditions and the publications. Now the various institutions under ASI include the museums, the epigraphic branches, the temple survey, building survey and one specialized branch which is underwater archaeology that talks about the remains which are seen below the water in the ocean for example Beit Dwarka which is considered the ancient or the original Dwarka uh, below the waters in the state of Gujarat. Now it also provides education. So you have Institute of Archaeology in New Delhi and the Central Archaeological Library in Delhi that was established. The next is the publications by ASI. Now the publications includes the National Archaeological Review, the Epigraphica Indica which is very very important, various southern Indian inscriptions and the annual reports on Indian epigraphy. So you have, now as we said there is the difference between the ancient monuments and the archaeological sites. So the ancient monuments are those monuments or sculptures which are not less than 100 years old and include the remains of any ancient monument, the site, the land which adjoins that area and where a kind of inspection can be carried out. The archaeological site includes the area which is of historical or archaeological importance for not less than 100 years. Uh, and more. So, it has any land area which is covered by fencing or otherwise and meant for preservation under archaeology and where you can have a good inspection in that area. The next is Anthropological Survey of India. This had its origin from the zoological and the anthropological section of the Indian Museum which comes under the uh, Zoological Survey of India in 1961. Uh, sorry, 1916. In 1945, this anthropological survey became the anthropological survey of India in Varanasi. It was shifted to Kolkata in 48. The first director was B. S. Guha, and B. S. Guha has various books uh, written on anthropology. Uh, he is one of the uh, he was one of the leading anthropologists in India. Then you have the deputy director who was Vernier Elvin and this again comes under the department of culture. The idea is to do various researches in anthropology, do researches on biological and cultural peculiarities of various human tribes, the human evolution, the human skeletal, the various arts and tribes, uh, arts and crafts of the various tribes in India. Now it has the headquarters in Kolkata but it has various regional centers like Port Blair, Dehradun, Udaipur, Nagpur, Mysore. Again it has two major field stations, one in Jagdalpura in Bastar district Chhattisgarh and other in Ranchi in Jharkhand. The next important one is All India Radio established in 1930, in 56 it was named, named as Akashwani. Uh, the motto is Bahujan Hitai, Bahujan Sukai that is uh, reaching the maximum and benefiting the maximum. So you have, uh, this comes under the division of Prasar Bharti. It's a kind of sister service of Prasar Bharti's Doordarshan which we will see later. It is the largest radio network in the world with 420 stations covering 99% population and 92% area giving programs in 23 languages and 146 dialects. The idea is to penetrate more information and education to the masses. It comes under the Prasar Bharti Act of 1960. 
the various objectives includes upholding the national unity, creating a balanced flow of information, promoting uh, interest uh, for uh, understanding within the country, various programs and uh, the programs reaching the rural illiterate and the underprivileged people. The next is ICCR that is Indian Council for Cultural Research established in 1950 by Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad who was the India's first education minister who comes, uh, this comes under the Ministry of Education headquartered in New Delhi. It has various regional offices and also has international presence. Recently some of the new cultural centers have been established in these centers in, throughout the world. Now, it, the idea is to provide Indian culture a kind of international platform with more exposure, more relations that could be built with other nations. Now again there has been kind of translation services from Sanskrit to other languages, foreign languages and foreign languages to Indian languages that has been seen under ICCR. It provides scholarships to nearly 1800 candidates every year. There are various publications like Indian Horizon in English, Ganga Nachal in Hindi and so on. Then you have ICHR that is Indian Council for Historical Research which predominantly focuses on historical research. It provides junior and senior research fellowships, comes under the Society Registration Act, draws funds from University Grants Commission headquartered in Delhi. It has regional centers in Bangalore and Guwahati. It's a kind of literary and charitable society that comes under Ministry of Education. R.S. Sharma was the first nominated chairperson for ICHR. As we said, it talks about promoting uh, historical education, historical development, coordinating the various activities and has various publications like Indian Historical Review in English and Ithyas in Hindi. Now all these objectives what we are discussing here have been, uh, are available in detail at doorstriptutor.com. Uh, so just go on to IS mains, uh, then you go on to GS mains paper 1, you would have the complete notes whatever we are discussing here or else you can take down the handouts as we are proceeding. So the next is Center for Cultural Resource and, Resource and Training Programs that is CCRT established in 1979, pioneered by Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay and Kapila Vatsayan. It's an autonomous organization which comes under Ministry of Culture. The idea is to link education to culture. Headquarter is in Delhi with regional centers in Udaipur, Hyderabad and Guwahati. Again as we said the idea is to uh, connect culture and education, provide in-service training programs, conduct various workshops, have library facilities, educational aids, publications, cultural talent research scholarships and a kind of CCRT teachers award. There are various efforts which includes providing scholarships, fellowships and cultural her heritage leadership programs. The next is Craft Council of India started in 64 by Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay. Since it was started by Kamla Devi, uh, it has a kind of series of shops which are named as Kamla and uh, the headquarters are located in Chennai with nine state councils. The idea is to provide ground for the traditional handicrafts that are available in the country. Uh, to develop those people, bring in more technology, more research and development for them and to uh, provide a platform by means of all India craft fairs or craft councils that could be seen and providing them an opportunity or a platform to develop. INTAC is very very important that is Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage. It is a non-profitable charitable organization registered under Societies Registration Act. 1860. In 2007, UN awarded it a kind of special consultative status with UN Economic and Social Council. It was established in 84 with the headquarters in New Delhi, has chapters in 170 cities with uh, Belgium and UK as the major centers. Some of the divisions include the architectural heritage, natural heritage, material heritage, uh, the heritage academy, tourism, library and so on. The idea is to sensitize people about the cultural heritage of India, to develop a sense of social responsibility in order to maintain the cultural heritage we have. It focuses on all the three kind of heritage, the living heritage, the built heritage and the natural heritage. It provides kind of protection to all the buildings and the places of aesthetic significance. It provides kind of emergency response measures for the disaster uh, kind of uh, time when you have a disaster or a natural or a man-made casualty that could occur in that region. It has various memoranda of understanding with Indian 
institutions, governmental and international institutions. It provides various awards for tourism, heritage conservation and environmental conservation. It has a separate UK trust which works with the Charles Falls which is funded by Charles Falls and works for the heritage conservation. The next is Indira Gandhi National Centre for Arts established in 85 in the memory of Indira Gandhi. Uh, it has the functioning which is governed by the Indira Gandhi National Centre for Arts Trust established in 87. It is an autonomous institution, works for performing and visual arts. Uh, it has kind of five elements that is fire, earth, water, sky and vegetation that are brought together and five rocks from five rivers which have different five sculptures that are formed. That is the rocks from Sindhu, Ganga, Kaveri, Mahanadi and Narda have been brought there. The idea is to maintain the resources for the uh, arts especially the written and the oral sources to undertake the various research and publication activities, tribal and folk art divisions, work around various conferences and projections and to have a kind of social interactions, uh, work around the social strata and provide various research facilities and humanities and culture. It has various units, one is Kala Nidhi for library, Kala Kosh for the fundamental text, Janpat Sampada for the various lifestyle studies, cultural informatics for tools on preserving the cultural uh, heritage. Then you have Sutradhara which works around the administrative functions and Kala Darshan which is a unit how to transform the research. Uh, for culture. The next is Asiatic society, we would again study this when we will be talking about the lectures in history. Now Asiatic society was established by Sir William Jones in 1894. The idea was to work around or inquire the history, science and arts of Asia. It is one of the leading centers of Indology in the world. It works around the Encyclopedia Asiatic projects in 8 volumes and has a library with more than 1 lakh books and 80,000 journals. It has illustrated manuscripts of Quran, Gulistan and Pacha Nama text which were the signatures of Emperor Shah Jahan during that time. Now comes the Department of Culture. It was initially under MHRD that is Ministry of Human Resource Development. Uh, now it has been shifted to Ministry of Culture established in 85 as a in, under the 174th amendment act as the department of culture it uh, plays a major role in preservation promotion of culture and provides financial aids and assistance various training programs the next is department of youth affairs and sports work around development of youth and sports activity in india it was uh, it worked around with 1985 which coincided with the international youth year it has two departments the Nehru Yuva Kendra Sangathan and the Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development. The Department of Sports includes the Sports Authority of India, National Anti-Doping Agency, National Dope Testing Laboratory and Lakshmi Bhai Institute of Physical Education. The next is Doordarshan established in 59 with two channels DD National and DD News. Later on it had an international channel DD Sports, Rajya Sabha TV, Lok Sabha TV, various state networks and 11 regional satellite centers. It is one of the largest broadcasting organizations in the world with 21 channels and 47 program induction center, program producing centers and 1400 hours of programs every week. It covers around 88% of India's population. The next is Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Smriti. Gandhi Smriti is the place which talks about the life where Gandhi's life was ended. Uh, there is a permanent photo exhibition at Rajgarh which is known as Gandhi Darshan. Uh, this Gandhi Darshan talks about the Gandhi's uh, life and with the logo my life is my message. The various publications are seen on Gandhiji and a Gandhi memorial lecture series have been organized. In 94, at the 125th birth anniversary of Gandhiji, it was converted into International Center for Gandhian Research and Studies. The next is IGNU, that's the Indira Gandhi National Open University that talks about distance learning programs and reaching the far flushed areas of India, established in 85 under the Ministry of Education with the initial support of UNESCO the Global Mega Universities Network and the SARC Consort Consortium with 26 regional centers and 504 study centers. The next is Kala Shetra, which literally means holy place for arts established in 1936 by Rukmani Devi Arunandale in uh, Chennai. It's a cultural academy for preservation of uh, traditional values in India. In 1993, it was named as Institute of National Importance. 
Later it was called as Kala Kshetra Foundation Act and comes under the Department of Culture. It works around the Gurukul system uh, which focuses on dance theory and music as subsidiary. Kala Mandalam is known for Kathakali in Kerala, established in 1930 by V.N. Menon. Uh, it, is be, it is located near Bharat Puja River in Thisur district in Kerala. It works around a kind of combination of northern and southern dance styles which includes Kodiattam, then you have Kathakali and various other dance forms like Mohinaattam. It was under the government of Kerala in 1941 for maintenance and also teaches various percussion instruments like Mandalam and Mizua. Then you have Marine Archaeological Center, what we called as Underwater Archaeology. It worked around the Beit Dwarka that we had discussed. It was established by Institute of Oceanography, Goa in 1981. National Book Trust established in 1957 under Ministry of Education. It talks about working for low cost books, uh, mainly for children. So you have children's books and children's literature that can be seen every alternate year. You have NBT that organizes the World Book Fairs and you have various international book fairs where it participates. National Center for Performing Arts, now from the name itself we know this center is known for performing arts and visual arts. So you have uh, established in 1966, it's a non-profit institute, receives support from Government of India and Ford Foundation and UNESCO. The idea is to develop the classical, traditional and contemporary art form to develop various schools, libraries, archives for cultural promotion, develop the scientific uh, organization, grant scholarships and awards for cultural expertise. Now the facilities includes a concert hall which is known as Tata Theatre, an experimental hall known as Tata Experimental Theatre, a dance theatre under the name of Godrej Dance Academy, recording studio as Little Theatre, art gallery as Jahagir Nicholson Museum of Modern Art and photographic gallery as Piramal Gallery of Centre of Photography. The next is NCRT, the National Council for Education, Research and Training established in 1961 which is, uh, comes under the Ministry of Education as an autonomous institute, provides the best uh, or uh, kind of uh, uh, educational services for school education. So NCRT books are something that is the recommended ones for even the UPSC candidates. It has various regional centers that could be seen here. It organizes the National Talent Search Scholarship which takes around 750 qualified candidates every year and provides a scholarship throughout their studies. The National Institute of Education, uh, New Delhi comes under this which works on the various research and development uh, activities on the pedagogical aspects. Then you have Central Institute of Educational Training which works around the media related activity and Pandit Sundarlal Sharma Central Institute of Vocational Education in Bhopal which works on vocational training. It, in 2005, it released the NCF that is National Curriculum Framework which focused on the five principles. First is removing any kind of rote learning, focusing more on knowledge outside the school. So moving from a theoretical to a practical approach, working around uh, making examinations more flexible and nourishing the identity of an individual. The National Gallery of Modern Art was established in New Delhi. It's a kind of institution which was developed in India by government of India. Uh, this works around all the art and culture that were during the medieval period or the 19th century. So you have the works of Thomas Daniel, Abhindranath Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore, Gemini Roy and so on which could be seen here along with the various foreign works that are being collected here. So all the kind of modern arts from 1850 50 onwards could be seen in collection here. It has a special exhibitions for special sections, various libraries and periodicals that could be seen. Then you have National Research Laboratory for Conservation of Cultural Property in Lucknow that talks about uh, the conservation of the cultural heritage by means of chemical or physical conservation. So you have, uh, it was established in 1976, comes under the Ministry of Culture. It has various research centers. The southern one is in Mysore which has been functional since 87 and it also works around the wall paintings and the coral uh, monuments of Malay Maldives. So that's the basic idea and uh, this. Then you have Nritya Gram. Nritya means dance, Gram means village. So it's a kind of dance village which has been established by uh, Odissi dancer Poritima Gauri in, uh, Gauri in 1990. 
uh, it works on the gurukul paddhati where you have seven dance forms that are being worked around with six to seven years of training and every year you have around six to ten students that are taken uh, it works on a kind of eight hours a day six days a week basis the architecture was designed by Gerard da Kuna and it lies around 30 kilometers away from Bengaluru near Hesargetta Lake. The next is Prathvi Theatres established in memory of Prathvi Raj Kapoor which was later taken over by his son and daughter-in-law Shashi Kapoor and Jennifer Kapoor and was known as Sri Prathvi Raj Kapoor Memorial Trust and Research Foundation. The idea was to build theatre and bring in new talents for the theatres with nearly 540 shows every year. Ramakrishna Mission Institute for Culture lies in Kerala, works along the thought, knowledge and education of cultural activities. It has various schools of instructions and uh, it was started on the birth, 100th birth anniversary of Sri Ramakrishna in 1938. The next is Ravindra Bharti. It's a national theatre which is constructed by government of Andhra Pradesh, mainly focusing on the dance, drama and music in the twin city of Hyderabad and Sikundrabad area. Opened in 61 by Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan, it's an autonomous body that comes under the Department of Cultural Affairs. Rukmini Devi Cultural Center established in 1999 by Rukmini Devi Arunadale offers courses in Bharatnatyam, Karnatic music, Carnatic music and fine arts. It has also a photographic gallery by C. Nachiyapam. Then you have Sri Arbindu Institute of Research and Social Sciences comes under or established by Sri Arbindo Society in 1985. It works around social thoughts, education, arts, uh, economic, psychology, health and management. It has various subordinate organizations that could be seen here. Then you have seven zonal centers that are established around, across India. So for example, the West Zone in Udaipur, South Zone in Thanjavur, then you have Nagpur, Patiala, Dimapur, Allahabad and Kolkata as the different cultural zone centers of India. The next is National Monuments Authority under the Ministry of Culture. The, this was established under the Ancient Monument and Archaeological Site Remains Act 2010. The aim was to preserve and protect the various monuments, to consider grants for permission of the various monuments, put a complete ban on the construction in the prohibited area and scrutiny of the heritage bylaws. Then you have Jallianwala Bagh National Memorial Trust located in he uh, Amritsar became an institute of national importance in 1951. It inspires patriotism by bringing in the episode of Jallianwala Bagh and uh, promoting nationalism in the students and the youth. The ne next is National Cultural Fund. Now this is important, a National Cultural Fund we will be discussing in detail separately. It is a kind of distinct funding mechanism that has uh, funds from various sources and various patterns that are coming in. It does not work exactly as per the government norms and it's a trust that has been created in 1996. It has been chaired by the Union Ministry of Tourism and Culture and the idea is to increase the non-governmental representation in the kind of decision making process. So it's a basically a non-governmental body that exists. We'll be talking about NCF in more detail in a separate lecture. Now here are some of the questions based on the cultural institutions which have also been asked from past examinations like 1985 you had one of the questions. So you can take down these questions, these would also be available below the video in the comment section. You can try to write draft answers based on these and see how you can uh, work around your writing styles for the upcoming mains examinations. We will be covering more chapters on Indian art and culture in the upcoming lectures. Keep subscribed and keep tuned. You can click on the subscribe button. Once you click on the subscribe bu button, you will see a bell icon that would be there. Once you click the bell icon, you would receive all the uh, new videos that are being updated as notifications in your YouTube channel itself. Have a good day ahead.